it's got a hand on your butt and it's like, nope, this way. Hello, people on the interwebs. It's your favorite shop dwelling Sarah here with another car review. And today I have a big f***ing Mercedes. It's a 2021 S580 AMG line 4Matic. And it's got all wheel steering. So let's get it up in the air and take a look at that. Active exhaust. It's made out of metal, but it's not attached to the muffler. Active doodad on the outer tip. It's fatter diameter actually on the outer tip than the inner tip. Weird. Hello, look at all these plastic nuts. Tons of plastic nuts. So there's actually quite a bit to nerd out on on the back of this car. Because for one, it has aromatic air suspension. However, you can't really see much of it because it's all hidden with this plastic aerodynamic cladding on the lower control arm. You can see most of the components though when I stuff my DSLR camera up inside here. Almost everything is made out of aluminum other than those two upper links. Those look like those are steel. The rear anti-sway bar though, for a car that weighs almost 5,000 pounds, that's pretty dinky. It's about the size of my index finger. And secondly, this is equipped with the rear wheel steering package. It gives you up to 4.5 degrees of angle to steer with your rear wheels. Additionally, there's a package above this one that increases that to 10 degrees of steering in the rear wheels. And it's noticeable when you drive this thing at only 4.5. This right here is crazy. This car has over 500 pound feet of torque and the rear subframe is made out of a composite plastic, honeycomb shaped for strength, but plastic. And the front of it has some aluminum that's kind of fused into that piece for strength, but hmm, must be for weight savings. That's just so crazy to me. I mean, I guess essentially it is a two piece rear subframe. The rearmost portion of it is all made out of steel. It's just this front structure that is that composite plastic aluminum. And then there's this little guy right here mounted to the back of the subframe. Looks like some sort of a vibration dampening system because it's soft mounted, but it's a hard piece of steel on the outside. As far as the underside of this car goes, super flat down here. The plastic that you see covering almost everything does have that furry texture to it to keep noise down. Lots of heat shielding around that centerpiece of an exhaust with two big resonators and an H pipe in the middle, all stainless steel in construction. And as far as how it sounds, Dude, check this out. It's got like little dimples, like a golf ball. I, I really have no idea what the purpose of that is for. Maybe strength or somehow it resonates sound differently. So if you look right up above that golf ball plastic panel, you can see the plastic belly pan of the 9G Tronic nine-speed automatic transmission. Wandler 9 gang automatic bis 700 newton meter ein gangs moment which essentially means this automatic transmission is capable of 700 newton meters of torque or 516 pound feet. That took a load of time to memorize how to say. You know it would be a nightmare to work on? This is the back half of the transmission and uh, you can barely see that Phoebe bushing right there on the end of the drive shaft. So that means all of this has to come out of the way to take that drive shaft off. It's, that's a whole process right there. And if you look up inside there, that abyss, you know Lego kits have an age limit printed on the box to give you an idea of how difficult it would be to assemble it? If this were the case of being a Lego kit like that, it would have age 110 on it because, nope. Front suspension wise, everything is constructed out of aluminum other than the very bottom of the strut. You got dual ball joints right here on the bottom of the knuckle for these two links, but what's more interesting is the nuts that are used on all these ball joints. There's no cotter pin, there's just an Allen key that goes in the end. Oh no, it's not even an Allen key. Oh, f that, that's all kinds of weird tools you need to do these. Okay, it's time for the braking test. This is gonna hurt. The one behind me, 
Ready? Jeez. That was very smooth. Incredibly smooth. That's a ton of mass to bring to a stop. Ooh, I feel weird. Good job. For how big this car is, good job. It wasn't the shortest stopping distance, but it was powerful and smooth, and then I felt warm everywhere. That's a huge ass set of brakes. It's a six pot monoblock caliper right there with a 14.5 inch rotor or 368 millimeters for you metric folk. I'm one of you, I prefer metric. Surrounding those brakes is a set of optional 20 by 10 in the front, AMG wheels wrapped in a 255 40 20. Out back, you now step up to a 20 by 11 in that wheel wrapped in a 285 35 series of that Hankook Ventus Noble S1 tire. The brakes though, they get a little bit smaller. You go down to a 14.1 inch rotor or 358 millimeters. And the caliper, it's still pretty beefy. It's bigger than the front caliper on my MR2 but not as big as the fronts. And the rotors there are two piece all the way around and drilled, not slotted. In the name of science, I'm now gonna give this thing the beans. I have some drive modes down here on this little floating bar in my screen that I can tap on. I have Eco, Comfort, Sport, Sport Plus, and Individual. And inside Individual, you can tap on the gear on the screen and then you can configure your drive mode, suspension, steering, and then ESP, or traction control. There's only sport and comfort though. I don't see an option to fully defeat it. Ah, there it is. I, of course, will keep this thing in sport plus and let this thing eat. Ready? Go. Okay. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's the jorts. Oh, the thing rips. Okay, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that was a shove in the gut right there. So smooth. It is so incredibly smooth. This thing shits and gets, dude. No joke. Jeez, they really bury that. Well, that's, that's actually not too bad considering how big the hood is. Hello and welcome to underneath the hood of this S580 that doesn't fit in a title bubble because that's really long. <laughs> Under this hood is the M176, which is a four liter twin turbo die cast alloy block and head, which is a fully closed deck block, might I add you, V8 that produces 496 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 516 pound feet of torque from 2000 to 4,000 RPM. Now it doesn't do that all with internal combustion technology on its own. This does employ Mercedes EQ boost technology, which means this is a 48 volt mild hybrid system, which on its own can produce up to 20 horsepower and 184 pound feet of torque. Let's see if Mercedes made this a little bit easier for me to pop off so we can get a better look at this engine. Come on, come out of there. There we go. They make this thing hard to take off. Yeah, now you can see what's up. And there lies in the valley of this V8, running 17 pounds of boost, a pair of Borg Warner twin scroll turbos. Some specs on this thing, as I mentioned, it is a fully closed deck block, four liter V8. It's dual overhead cam, 32 valve, has direct injection. Also an 83 by 92 millimeter bore and stroke, 10 and a half to one compression ratio. It's got some air to water charge coolers right up here on the top of the valve covers. This thing's shoehorned into the engine bay, but it gets a pass because it's a Mercedes V8. The ground points right here are interesting. They're symmetrical. You got two right here on this really beefy inner structure of the fender well. You got another one over here, same thing. These strut tower points are really far forward in the engine bay too. I mean, look at that, that V8 sits mostly behind the front wheels. So this is interesting. There are three coolant expansion tanks. You have one right here, center front of the engine, another one over here on the driver's side, and a large one over here on the passenger side. 
I presume it's got three different systems, one probably for the charge coolers, and then maybe a split system, one for the block and one for the heads. And beans. Oh, this doesn't get old. Now I've only ever reviewed one car that I feel is a true competitor to this thing, and that'd be the Lexus LS 500. I would choose this car over it for the mechanical aspects. I like this power plant better. I love the rear wheel steering. I didn't think I would really notice it, but you totally can notice it. Going slower speed corners is where you know it the most, under 55 miles per hour. You can just feel that back end getting guided around, just like it's got a hand on your butt and it's like, nope, this way, nope this way. I don't think performance is really why you would buy a car like this though. That would be the inside and that's where it's kind of a toss up between the LS 500. I do like the LS 500's interior and I have to say I like the Mark Levinson sound system better. I prefer the feeling of the subwoofers and the footwell and the Mercedes. However, acoustically I feel it sounds better in the Lexus where the sound system is situated in that car. And speaking of feeling, these massage front seats. Let me tell you about the deep waves feature on the massage. I don't want to go in depth, but it makes you feel a certain kind of way, like a car has never made me feel ever. Tech-wise, the 3D gauge cluster in here and the augmented reality navigation that shows up on the massive heads-up display on this thing, I didn't even know that existed. That, especially the gauge cluster, that is next level insane. I don't know if this is gonna work, but I wanted to switch over to nighttime so you can see what it looks like on the inside of this car driving at night. Now, Mercedes does these ambient lights and a lot of their other models, but I feel in the S-Class, it is like next level. It is, it's like having the best Christmas lights on the block inside your car. The automatic high beams, when they turn on, they sweep outward and then sweep back on. Very digital looking. It's like a curtain that opens and then there's also a thing for the augmented reality navigation on my heads up display in front of me. You can choose to use that for your augmented navigation. Basically it shows you your directions. Like if you're supposed to turn left, it'll show you left arrows way out in the highway in front of you. And as you come nearer and closer to where you're supposed to turn, the arrows get larger as they come towards you. So it's like driving in 3D almost. And then there's an the eco setting, which I keep it in all the time. And it shows a ball on the road in front of you. And the best way I can describe this is if you slam on the brakes or floor it, the ball will either go far away from you or come really close towards your face. And it turns red if it's the extreme of either direction. And then it's green in the center and you just try to keep it there. The only thing I wish it did is right here in the corners, it'd be nice if you could make the ball go to the sides. This is so wild. It does not handle like a 5,000 pound car. It handles much better than that. You, you can feel the weight. It's there, especially if you hit a little bump in the road. You can feel it want to skip drastically over. But this thing handles pretty good for how big of a vehicle it is. I do like the AMG line appearance package that this one has. There is another model up above this and then of course there is the Maybach. I couldn't imagine what that car is like because this is extremely luxurious as it is on the inside. Although the back seat, I definitely recommend the next tier up from uh, the AMG line package if you want some more features back there because it doesn't even have heated seats back there, which is kind of a letdown for a car of this price. This one does come with pillows back there, so I guess you get a pass. A pillow versus a heated seat. Pillow is pretty sweet. The amount of detail in here though, like up along these little vents and the fact that they have a little button on the side of the vents, fuel economy wise, it's not too bad considering how big this car is and how powerful it is and how quick it is. I think it does fairly well. And the only way to get any better than that is to make it full EV. And I'm gonna be really sad when they do that because that means no more Mercedes V8s.
If you guys have never seen one of my vehicle reviews before, I have multiple categories to rate and assess them, starting with the coveted bean score. It has a rating of one to five beans based on the feeling you get behind that belly button when you give it the beans. And this S580 formatic is getting a rating of three beans, three electric assisted beans. This thing is fast for how heavy it is. It's quick in general, but it's just an engineering feat when you think of just how massive this car is. Next though is the cookie score, it is an assessment of value for what you spend for what you get. And this $138,000 S584 Matic AMG line is getting a rating of, it's a lot of money, but it's a lot of car. So. I think it's a, a smidge above average just because of the weird tech in there that I was not expecting. Next is the mechanic score. It is assessment of one to five wrenches based on how terrible it would be to maintain one of these. One being abysmal and five being the easiest car in the world, like a bicycle. And this car is getting a rating of 1.3 wrenches, the lowest score I've ever given because you have to know what you are doing to work on one of these, let alone you have to have some special tools. And if this car was like 20 years old, oh, it's a challenge. I would love to work on one of these 20 years from now. I would swear a lot, but it would be fun because I like a challenge. But yeah, that that's complex on a whole new level. Lastly though, is the Penguin score. It is a rating of one to five penguins based on how much I personally like a vehicle. And that car right there is getting a rating of 3.8 penguins. I have absolutely adored the week I've spent in this car. I have felt so bougie and it was a treat with all the weird tech in there and the rave lights. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this review. If you want to check out more, I'm filming a second review this day and it will be on my second channel, Give It The Beans, if you guys have never been over there. It's just all car reviews. So check it out if you want. I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.